and I'd like to welcome everyone to our uh, video conference today. It's scheduled for about half an hour, um, and I will shortly introduce our two panelists to you. Um, we're doing a video conference, so if you go into gallery view, you can see the people that have got their video cameras on, and uh, we can probably have a little bit of a discussion. But what I would like to ask you to do is that if you've got a question, just put it in the chat and towards the end, we'll ask our panelists to please answer them for you. So, to create some context up front, <clears throat> the Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa um, has been doing an annual convention since 2006. But about four years ago, they decided to include a midterm convention, which, if I understand it correctly, was designed in order to focus specifically on the business of professional speaking. In other words, helping people to um, create a speaking business um, where they in fact have paid clients. So it's giving people the tools as opposed to simply teaching them how to speak and giving them a whole cross range in that area. Now, the upcoming one is interesting in as much as it is the first time we've ever had it online, obviously because of the COVID-19 situation. And what we've decided to do is that in order to uh, explain to people what it's going to be all about, uh, we've asked our marketing brains trust Zanele to join us and our program director, Arthur Goldstuck. So let me just tell you a little bit about both of them. Um, Zanele is known as the unlearning lady in charge of marketing for this event. Um, she generally um, is, is the person that talks about change which is very interesting because this convention is going to be all about change. It's going to be about the business of speaking and it's called Speak to the Future, which was a term that was coined by our other guest, uh, Arthur Goldstuck. Um, so that is Zanele. We have Arthur Goldstuck. He's the editor-in-chief of South Africa's longest running online consumer technology magazine, gadget.co.za. He has all sorts of unbelievable um, awards. He gets asked to speak frequently at all kinds of events. Um, and he is someone who has been on my webinar in June. Um, it was interestingly one of the most viewed of my webinars and also one of the longest because once Arthur gets going, he doesn't stop. But I have told him to keep it brief today. So um, it's going to be pretty interesting. So I think I'm going to um, start immediately and I'm going to ask Arthur, just to explain to us uh, what is different about this year's midterm convention and what sets it apart from any other conventions that we've previously had. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks everyone for joining us. The key differentiator is that there is an overriding theme across the whole convention. And not just the theme that makes it different, but also the environment, the situation in which we find ourselves. So clearly COVID-19 has changed the world and we're never going back to the way it was before, but uh, the future will probably be a kind of hybrid world between what we're all experiencing at the moment with social distancing and the way that the industry will be reinvented in the future. So given all of these parameters, it struck me that we have to really be speaking about the future and about the speaking, the future of the speaking profession, but specifically how the current situation, the pandemic will play out in terms of its impact on the uh, speaking profession and um, on speakers. So uh, as you said, Paul, the conventions tend to be about the business of speaking. So yeah. it seemed like a natural um, approach to look at the future of the business of speaking through the lens of COVID-19. Okay, but what's quite interesting about this is it's not actually only about the speakers. Um, it's about how it affects their audiences as well. And Zanella, perhaps you can speak to this one, is who are the kinds of people that typically would want to attend a convention of this nature? Cool. So we've got a, a really, really great program and it's open to not just speakers. So speakers, trainers, facilitators, coaches, 
um, and such a, a wide range of individuals that not only speak, but also individuals in the events industry. Um, so we've got a lot of really great guests and I don't want to um, spoil it, but a, a lot of really great guests that are going to help us to navigate the future of events going forward. So anyone who has anything to do with the future of events, anyone who has any kind of role to play in events holistically. So whether you're an event organizer, you're a conference facilitator, whether you're an actual speaker or whatever work you do within the event industry, this is definitely the conference or the event for you to attend if you sort of just want to navigate what that's going to look like in the coming years. Right, so if, if I'm to attend a convention, what I'm quite interested to know about is, is the topics. I mean, what are these guys going to, what are people going to be speaking about? So Arthur, maybe I can ask you about that, the topics that attendees can expect from the program this year. Great. So the, the topics very much evolve around the actual speakers and the expertise um, of the speakers. So, uh, for example, um, one of the opening speakers is... Um, is Abdullah Varachia, who is a very well-known lecturer at Gibbs. And he's written a book on the future of Africa. He's got a new book coming out that he'll be using as a theme for uh, the conference. But essentially, he'll be talking about the future of Africa and obviously how it plays out as a result of COVID-19, but also then how we have to position ourselves uh, in that future. Uh, then. From the other side of the world, we have uh, Alan, uh, Alan Weiss, who's uh, one of the best known speakers in the world on consulting. And um, he will uh, talk about how we can grow rich from speaking in this new environment and what it takes to uh, build a speaking uh, business. He's, uh, one of his most successful books is called The Million Dollar Consultant. And uh, that's essentially what he's going to bring to the party is consulting in the future. And as you well know, uh, many of our top speakers um, make a big chunk of their living from consulting. So that's what he brings uh, to the party. We've got a range of international speakers. We've got Linda Shaw, who's the incoming president of the equivalent of PSASA in the United Kingdom, the Professional Speakers Association of the United Kingdom. She's the incoming president. She um, made it very clear that she's only going to be incoming next year because they've extended the term of the coming president because of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And she's going to talk about the neuroscience of being virtual. So um, her speciality area is neuroscience, but putting it in the context of how speakers have to adapt themselves to this new environment is going to be absolutely uh, fascinating. And then a South African speaker giving uh, a different perspective on that is Andy Golding, who's also written a book co-authored Being Human, and she's going to talk about how deep tech means being deep human as well. So in other words, how to remain human in this future of work, in this future virtual environment, and also being innovation ready for uh, this future. So I'm, we... I'm, hearing a, I'm hearing a lot of um, bringing together the tech and the human side so that there isn't this feeling of of, of, of disconnect and of not really understanding how, how to get by. In other words, um, still creating some kind of community where we can feel that even though we can't shake hands, we can still almost be together. No, exactly. Uh, I think that's a, a critical element of uh, almost all of these talks is how to keep that human touch, how to remain connected and engaged um, in a world in which we're relying more heavily than ever before on technology and on technology platforms. So the platform moves from the physical stage to the virtual stage, therefore to the technology stage. So how do you re retain that connection with your audience when everything revolves around the technology? Well, in effect, our speakers bring it back to everything revolving around the human being. Okay, so um, Zanele, for those wanting to attend, um, it is, for, for something of this incredible value with the type of speakers we're going to hear locally and from abroad, focusing on um, some pretty high level stuff. Um, how, how can, where can people get news and updates on the midterm convention so they can make a considered choice about whether to attend or not? Yes. 
So that's a good question. And I think it's really important for people to maybe even begin by stalking us. So going over to social media, to our page on Facebook, we've got a community group as the PSASA to head on over there and sort of see our community, the speakers we have uh, that, we're, that we engage with in that group, and even our actual uh, PSASA group. And then also we're on Twitter, and that's where they can also get uh, updates around the midterm convention and every and as we start to announce new speakers and that type of information. But if they really want to get the whole gamut, they can head over to our website, uh, psasouthernafrica.co.za and really emerge themselves, immerse themselves in exactly what's going on, who the confirmed speakers are, and then right there, they'll find our registration page and be able to then interact with us. But we, we definitely want to encourage a lot of interaction on social media. If they don't want to jump all the way in, they must feel free to head over to our social media platforms, engage with us, and, and feel free to send messages on those platforms should there be any questions or something they, they wish to get help with, if they're struggling with registering, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, Paul. So I guess that that, um, that community group is really going to be hotting up uh, in the next three to four weeks or so. So uh, it, it's actually PSA, SA community group that you need to look for. And if you wish to join, you can simply request to join and that should be um, responded to within 24 hours and you're in. Uh, you'll be able to post and and what have you because i do understand it's a it's a closed group so you need to ask permission to do it but that's a great place to get information on uh the convention that's coming up and then zanella any special promotions from now leading up to the convention yes i think um without saying too much i know it's important for us to get really excited so i'm going to give two of our sponsors that have confirmed we all know of PayFast, the online payments platform oh, yeah. They've agreed to sponsor a few vouchers if you're making any, and I think at this time, who isn't making online payments, right? So they've agreed to sponsor a few of our attendees at the conference, so you'll have to register to be eligible to actually win this prize. And then also we, we've got um, a few other sponsors that we were working with at the moment as well, one of which is the Camera Stuffs Shop, and they, they work with speakers consistently from your ring lights to your light shapers oh, to wow. reflectors, etc. etc. So, they're sponsoring a few vouchers uh, for speakers to actually purchase but at discounted prices. So, really, we've got some great partners that, that work with speakers consistently. So, if you do win something or actually get an opportunity to get a prize, it is something that is very valuable to a speaker in their day to day running, especially at a time when we're going hybrid and we're going virtual okay so folks you, you can probably see just behind zanele there is the new psasa logo uh, which is pretty snazzy um if you look carefully it's kind of a um it's a microphone superimposed against um against africa which is quite interesting because it's the professional speakers association of southern africa rather than the whole of africa so um What's the significance of this logo in light of the coming event? Oh, that's a really great one. And I invite Arthur as well to add on to this because this logo is, is launching at such a perfect time because it's at a time when the PSASA is transitioning. We are becoming more sleek. We want to appeal to a different kind of speaker, a speaker who wants to set themselves up professionally, professionally within their industry. So you'll see with our logo that not only do we have the microphone on uh, juxtaposed on the continent of Africa, because we are PSA Southern Africa. So we're not just restricted to South Africa, but we've got so many members outside of South Africa. The other thing you'll notice is that there's this camo going on with the different shades of orange and red. It shows the diversity that we have. Not only are we diverse in terms of our um, speakers, coaches, trainers, facilitators, et cetera, et cetera, but we're also diverse in what we offer as individuals. Our backgrounds, our languages that we speak in are also diverse. And so I think this logo does so well to be so sleek, but represent exactly who we are and what we stand for. Right. Arthur, do you have I anything to add to I think I must stress that, that PSASA is the Professional Speakers Association. And a lot of people get a little bit confused. They've heard of Toastmasters and they want to know what the difference is. Well, the difference very simply is that Toastmasters is a, well, I'll, I'll, give you the, I'll give you two versions. Firstly, Toastmasters is technically an amateur um, international organization, whereas uh, we are part of the Global Speakers Federation and we're a professional um, speakers outfit, which means that 
what, what PSASA does is it focuses very much on the business of speaking. In other words, people that want to earn a living from speaking. Does that mean that we are superior to Toastmasters? Well, we don't look at it that way because there are a number of Toastmasters that end up becoming professional speakers. And what often happens at Toastmasters is that they learn the craft of, of speaking. Uh, they go through a long stage and it develops tremendous confidence and out of Toastmasters, very often you find subject experts that are emerging that then become professional speakers and highly sought after on the speaking circuit. So I think that's just by way of explanation of, of the difference between PSASA and, and then uh, Toastmasters. So I, I just want to ask Arthur, what is behind the speak to the future theme as a way of obviously attracting people to this convention? Clearly, speakers all have uh, been knocked sideways by uh, the pandemic and especially in the early months of lockdown. I don't know a single professional speaker who didn't suddenly have a swathe of events either uh, cancelled or postponed. I was going to say cancelled, but that's a combination of postponement and cancellation. Well, we've Maybe been it's a new word that you've coined that we can put in the Oxford Dictionary. Exactly. We've been penciled all over the place. <laughs> um, so these, uh, th these uh, uh, pencillations have forced us all to reassess uh, what we do, how we do it, and also to guide our clients, in fact, in uh, how they should be doing it. Quite uh, early on, I had a client who said they're going to have to wait till after lockdown when they still thought that this would be over in three months. And I said to them, have you considered a virtual event? And uh, they were quite startled at the suggestion. They, had, they never thought of that. If you're in the speaking profession, sooner or later, you will have done a virtual event. But for yeah. event planners and organizers, uh, this wasn't even part of their thinking. So what uh, became very clear is that it's not just speakers who need to be guided into the future but the entire events industry needs this kind of guidance so in the first uh, month or two of the pandemic there's a case of saying well the year is an alternative year is a virtual environment in which to operate but uh, the future is going to be as i said earlier a hybrid of a uh, virtual and physical but it's going to be very different as well and uh, it was felt that it was important to really guide speakers and the industry into uh, this future, into the speaking future. It was, you could almost say that the, the theme wrote itself, but what was also really powerful about that theme is that it allowed us to focus quite strongly on exactly what kind of speakers we were going to approach, who we were going to invite. In other words, people who specifically had an angle that could be adapted to how the speaking profession is going to change, how speakers will um, change or will have to change and how mm. events organizers will also uh, need to change in the future. So we, we have a couple of panel discussions as well. Uh, one of the panel discussions looks at the uh, technical side, the tips and tricks of speaking to the future. And there we've got uh, two international experts and uh, two South African experts uh, talking. And then another panel looks at the events industry itself. And there we brought on board uh, the likes of Toastmasters that uh, you mentioned earlier. So we'll have Toastmasters and South African Events Council and Comensa and our own Graham Codrington speaking about the speaking profession itself or rather the events industry and uh, speaking in that context and how that is going to change. So it's all about change, shift, and adaptation. So um, I, I want to put something to you as well, is that a lot of, generally speaking, people see COVID-19 as having been this large negative thing. And in many respects, it has been a negative thing. But it's done a very interesting thing for the speaking industry. And that is that, um, whereas speakers had the platforms available to them to speak remotely, a very small percentage of them were doing so. That has switched around completely now to the extent that the majority of people that call themselves professional speaking uh, speakers have been dragged kicking and screaming and sometimes um, 
not kicking and screaming, but into this whole remote speaking environment. Now, I did an interesting little survey on the remote speaking Facebook group, which has over 1,700 members and was started by my co-author, Alan Stevens. And th th there were just three simple questions. And that is, have you developed an entire studio at home? Do you just use your webcam in your computer and the microphone in your computer? Or are you somewhere in between where you've bought yourself a professional uh, microphone and you've got a webcam and you, you're actually opting for higher quality without going the whole studio route? And what came out of that was that approximately 20% of those that responded to the survey. Now, again, I didn't have a sample of 1,700 people. There was probably about 100 respondents. But 20% of them had a full-blown studio. 20% uh, of them were still using the webcam in their computer and the microphone in the computer. But the other 60% had gone out and spent money on better equipment. So what we're putting out there, and this is incredibly interesting, is that most professional speakers, we believe, are probably equipped to give a pretty good uh, virtual presentation at some stage. How do you feel about that, Zanele? What, is, um, what has been your response to this whole remote speaking thing? It's been so interesting, and I can definitely support that data that so many of us have actually started to notice that, and just like our clients actually have started to notice that there's, there's no going back. This is now what that this is the form and shape that things are going to take. And we've gone out to say, okay, if we're going to do hybrid, let's do hybrid well. And I think our convention is, is specifically for speakers that have recognized exactly that. How do you do hybrid, but do it well? And I think some speakers, I don't know about you, Paul, have actually gone to the extent of saying, I don't think I'm going to leave the house in the next two years. I'm just going to do everything behind the screen. And that's what's going to work for me. People have set up entire studios with thousands and thousands of rands around what we now call our new normal. And I, th and I think it's quite exciting what it's done to the speaking industry. Well, I, I think that is interesting, but continually on the webinars that I've been holding, I've been getting the same message coming across time and time again. In fact, there's been two interesting things I'm going to ask you about, Arthur. The one is that sound is more important than video. And the other point is, it doesn't matter how fancy your studio is, if you cannot connect with your audience by giving them good content and moving away from waffling, you're dead. No question, uh, Paul. I'm one of the, the studio skeptics because what I've typically found is people who've invested heavily in equipment, in many cases, you cannot tell the difference in quality between them and the person just using their regular webcam as long as, and this is a key, um, what you, you call a proviso of, uh, of, of that uh, suggestion. As long as you have a quality webcam and you have quality audio on your laptop, you can get away with it because as I say, you can't really tell the difference in uh, many cases. If you're using it well though, then it really does stand out. When you look at the uh, backgrounds, when you look at the uh, presentation style of people like uh, Graham Codrington and Steph Duplessis, uh, you can see that they've, they've actually spent time and money on those uh, setups. But the point is that there isn't a massive gap between them and the rest. And those who have just spent, let's say, 20,000 Rand on extra equipment, very often find that that equipment doesn't work. So my rule of thumb is to have as few moving parts as possible. Because the more moving parts you have, the more can go wrong. Because every event is on a different platform. I'm uh, delighted that so many people have gravitated to Zoom because um, it, it tends to be so uh, simple. Everyone uh, tends to understand it. When I have an event on Teams, for example, Microsoft Teams, I always am nervous because it's quite a clunky platform. It's not meant for talks and presentations. It's a collaboration platform. So I always expect something uh, to go wrong on Teams. And in fact, the talk I gave this morning, um, I was supposed to take over controls. They handed over controls to me to drive the PowerPoint presentation and it wouldn't work. So someone in the background um, had to uh, drive it. Now that uh, um, is, is a function of Teams that is available there. So they decided to use it. On Zoom, it's not really available for me to take control of someone else's presentation. So we wouldn't use that. But the point there is there were, just too many moving parts, something was going to go wrong. 
So when you start adding a professional camera and professional speakers and uh, you link those all up um, on one or other platform, they won't work seamlessly. And when you start off using a microphone and you have problems and you pull it out, suddenly you on, uh, on a kind of mute that you can't get out of. You know, those kinds of issues that bedevil the complex uh, studio. So the real rule is to keep it as simple as possible. Leg. Do you want to just give us the costings quickly, Zanele? Sure. So for members, our cost now, because we're early, early bird is lapsed, so it's now 1,250. Okay, I seem to recall, yeah. Ian, if you want to unmute yourself quickly. Yeah, it's 1,650 Rand yep. for non-members. And those prices will go up from the 20th of September. So get your bookings in before the 20th of September. Okay, so that really Thank gives you. folk exactly 13 days to get their registration in. And at that price, as far as I'm concerned, tremendous value. I just wanna to say to everyone that I have never missed a PSASA convention since they started in 2006. One of the reasons was that I arranged the, one, the first two in 2006 and 2007. But we've been really fortunate in the quality of presenters that we've received. Um, and it's not just about learning how to speak. It's about running your business. It's about all aspects of speaking. It's about using technology. And of course, now uh, the big remote speaking uh, scenario that is upon us. Can you tell us where you'll be posting it, Zanele? I'll be posting it on the PSASA YouTube channel as well as on social media. So they'll be able to see it on Facebook as well. Just finally, I'd like to thank Zanella and Arthur for, for joining me on, on this little video conference. Uh, we purposely kept it nice and short so that you can go and get on with other stuff as well. Um, but if you are a speaker yourself, if you book speakers, if you want to know more about speaking, if you're an author that is a subject expert and is looking at becoming a professional speaker, this is a wonderful opportunity to rub shoulders virtually with a few people, get a bit involved, get to know about the PSASA, what we do. And um, I can tell you that those of us that have been members for, um, for years and years, we regard this as being our, our own little tribe. Uh, we love being part of the PSASA. We've met so many wonderful people. And uh, we hope you can join us um, at our midterm convention on the 2nd and the 3rd of October, 2020. So Once again, Zanele Njapa and Arthur Goldstuck, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much Thanks, for that information. Paul. Thanks to everyone who tuned in for the live. And I want to also give a warm welcome to those who are watching the recording. We hope that you will enjoy it. Thank you very much and ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>